am loving Severance Season 2 over on Apple TV Plus, and it got me inspired to create a lower third that kind of fits in the Severance universe. So that's what we're gonna make today in Apple Motion. Today, I'm gonna show you how to animate titles. I'm gonna show you how to create an underline that matches the width of that title. And finally, I'm gonna show you how to publish it over into Final Cut Pro so you can use it over and over again. And of course, if you're a patron, you can download this project file and use it in your own videos right now. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. In the project browser, we are going to select the Final Cut title. In the top right hand corner, you can set your preset to whatever you typically like to work with in Final Cut. And we're gonna set our frame rate to 2997. You can of course set this to whatever you like to work with in Final Cut Pro. And finally at the bottom, I like to set my duration to something like 10 seconds. After that, we can go down and press open. The first thing we're gonna need to do in this title project is to delete the type text here and title background layers that come by default. Once those are deleted, we can go ahead and add in our title. To do so, go ahead and locate your title tool just under the viewer. After that, we can click anywhere we want in the viewer and type in whatever name we want. So I'm gonna just type in Dylan Bates. From there, go on over to the left-hand side in the inspector. In here, we can change stuff like the size of our text. We can change the font. And to match that severance style, I'm actually gonna leave it in this Helvetica new font and change the thickness over to something like regular. Underneath that, I'm gonna set the alignment to be centered. And then at the very end, we can go to the top left and find properties and change the position. Right now it's offset from the center. So just right click on your position and select reset parameter. So now that will be directly in the middle. So we have our title, but we also want to have an underline that matches the width of our title. To do so, come on down to your rectangle tool. Now you might first suspect that you would use a line to create your underline. However, there are some reasons in Apple Motion why you might wanna instead use a rectangle. And if we're trying to create a line that matches the width of our text, a rectangle is going to be much simpler. So with our rectangle tool, we can go ahead and create a rectangle that's roughly the width of our title. It doesn't really matter because we'll match it up a little bit later and go ahead and adjust that width based on whatever you like. So I really like how the thinner width looks. And after that, we can go over to the left side under shape. In the geometry settings, you'll notice that we have the size parameter. And I can actually expand that out by clicking on this arrow. So now we have control over both the width and height using these various sliders. And what's really cool is we can link this width with our text. To do so, come on over to the right hand side and click this down arrow. Then from there, we're gonna select add parameter behavior and select link. Right now, Motion doesn't know what we want to link to, so we need to tell it. And to do that, we're just gonna simply click and drag our text object over to this drop well zone. So now you'll see that our source object is that text Dylan Bates. But it still doesn't quite know what to match up because there's a lot of different parameters that we could match it up with in our title. To change that, we'll find our compatible parameters and then we'll go down to object attributes, size, and then of course, width. So now the width of this rectangle will always match the width of our title. And to test that, we can write in something totally different. So just watch that line as I type in a new word and you'll see that it is matched up with the text perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this link parameter to be link width. That way we clearly understand what it's doing. But there's also another important element we want to add, and that is the element of animation. To do that, we're gonna need to use our link parameter. Coming down here, you'll see that we have this mix over time value, and that's set currently by default to custom mix. So I can actually adjust this slider, and it will go from not linking at all to linking up perfectly at a value of one. But what we can do is use this to easily animate our line. So I'm gonna change the custom mix over to ease in and out. And now you'll see that our mix slider has changed to this mix time range and it's set to 10. That means that over 10 frames, the animation will play out. Let's go ahead and set this to a full second by typing in 30 because we're on a 30 frame timeline. So now it will take an entire second for this line to match. However, taking a look in our viewer, you're gonna notice that you can't 
really tell the animation is taking place because our line is pretty close to the same width as our text. Making sure that your playhead is on the very first frame, go ahead and select your rectangle. In here, we'll locate our size parameter again under that geometry pane, and we're going to set our width all the way down to zero. So if we push play, we can watch it here and see how it slowly matches the width of our title. And what's super cool is at any time we can go into that link width parameter and adjust this mixed time range slider to slow or speed up our animation. So if I take that all the way up to 100 frames, you'll see that that will now take place over three seconds and 10 frames because again, we're on a 30 frame timeline. So this is super fun to play around with and I actually happen to like how about 45 frames looks for this particular animation. So that's super cool, but we're running into a significant problem. If I were to take this text and move it around on the screen, you'll notice that that line is not going with it. Selecting the rectangle, we can go on over into our properties and you'll locate the position parameter. Now, just to make sure everything is lined up perfectly, let's right click on that and again, reset that parameter. Then let's add in a link parameter and you can do that with two different ways. One is to right click on it or you can also come over to this down arrow and selecting that down arrow, we can go to add parameter behavior, then select link. Again, it doesn't quite know what we want to link to. So let's drag our title and bring it into this drop well. And Apple Motion knows that a lot of the time when you're linking the position of one object to another, you probably also want the position from that new object. So by default, it's going to automatically select the transform position property of that object that we just dropped in, which is handy. It just saves us a few extra clicks. But you'll notice that our line is locked in to wherever our title is, and we want it to be a little bit below, so we need to offset it. To do that, come on down to the bottom and you'll notice that we have an X, Y, and Z offset. So let's find the Y offset. That's going to be our vertical offset and just drag this to be down a little bit. I happen to like how negative 35 looks. You can of course adjust this to your own liking. And now what's awesome is if we move this title around, that line is going to move with it. And that's going to be incredible over in Final Cut Pro. Finally, let's add in our subtext to explain what my role is at my job maybe, or if I'm an Innie or an Audi, whatever you want it to be. So selecting the Dylan Bates text, I'm gonna push Command D to duplicate it so it has all the same settings. And let's drag this down to be below everything. Next, we can adjust the size of it, maybe change the font on it. I like how the thin looks for that secondary line. And we can write in whatever we want. So I'll just type in video editor, Dude, maybe the size is a little bit too big, so we can just scale that down and drag it roughly into position. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna need to offset it again, but that's looking pretty good. So now that we have that, we need to also link the position of this title. Selecting our video editor to text, let's go over to properties, locate the position, right click, select add parameter behavior, link. We'll drag in our Dylan Bates title. Maybe we'll rename this to be link position. And I might also do that on a rectangle actually for clarity's sake. Selecting that link position parameter on our video editor dude title, we can adjust the Y offset, but you'll notice that it doesn't let me go quite far enough here in our viewer. So we can click directly on the number value here and now we can further adjust that. And if you find that this box is actually getting in the way of what you're seeing, you can always push command question mark and that will get rid of the bounding box so you can clearly see what you're working with. So now we have our Dylan Bates text, video editor dude, and the line all drawing in. So all of those elements are in place. We just need to animate our title. Go ahead and select the Dylan Bates text first and we'll go up to behaviors and go down to text basic. And in here, there's a whole bunch of different animations you can play around with. The one that really reminded me of Severance was having these fade characters random in. So let's go ahead and push play and you'll see how the different letters slowly fade in as that line is being drawn into place. Next, let's select the video editor dude, go to behaviors, We'll go down to text basic. And then at the bottom, we're gonna select substitute in. And so now if we push play, you can see how the letters randomly change their values until finally we get our final text here, which says video editor dude. And again, that just really reminds me of severance in a lot of ways. Now we already are going to have our line 
animate back to its end position of zero because our link width text is set to ease in and out. But we also need to animate our titles. So to do that, we'll select Dylan Bates, we'll go to behaviors, we'll go to text basic, we're gonna select fade characters random out this time. Then I'm going to find it here in my timeline and just drag it over to the end of the project. Looking pretty good there. Let's do the exact same thing for video editor dude. We'll select it, behaviors, text basic, and select substitute out, drag it to the end of our project. And so now we should have a nice little in animation and we should also have a nice little out animation. So that's looking really nice. Now, there's one big element with Apple Motion. If we were right now to publish this to Final Cut Pro and change the duration from 10 seconds to say one second, we're going to 10x the animation speed. So these animations would take place way too quickly because Apple Motion is going to automatically interpolate that animation to that new speed. That is unless we tell it how long the animation needs to be. And that's super easy to do. Go ahead and find the end of your animation right here at one second and 14 frames. And I'm gonna push Shift M to add a marker. We can double click on that marker and change the type from standard over to build in optional. After that, we'll push okay. Then we'll go to the end of our animation, push shift M again, just before the animation starts taking place, double click and select build out optional. So now Apple Motion knows exactly how long these animations need to be before it goes to its looping point, which is between these two markers. That way we can extend out or shorten down this title as much as we need it to. Let's prepare this for Final Cut Pro by getting it to its final position. We'll just click and drag our title down to the bottom left. So it is in fact a lower third. That looks pretty nice to me. And now to publish this to Final Cut Pro, it's extremely difficult. Hang in there with me. But if you push Command S to save, it will allow you to publish. And we could just call this severed lower third or whatever you wanna call it. Throw it into any category you like. I'm gonna put it in my FCB's Patreon because my Patreon members will get this download and we could even add a title theme to it and push publish. So now this is available at any time over in Final Cut Pro. So to get access to it in Final Cut, we'll just go up to our titles. We could go to FCB's Patreon, which is where I've saved this and we can find severed lower third. I'll just drop this on the timeline and it plays out beautifully. And what's great is I can just click and drag this anywhere we want on the screen and it all works magically. Plus, because that title extends to the same width as our text, you can expand it out or shrink it down and you'll notice that that line is going to the exact same size. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button and consider subscribing as it does help tremendously. Also, if you wanna take your Apple Motion knowledge to the next level, then you might wanna check out my Apple Motion Masterclass, which is linked down below with over eight hours of in-depth training for Apple Motion.